Well, the end is here. I mean, the end of the year. And we're gonna celebrate New Year's Eve with five appetizers, each one under $10. You gotta love that. What's not to love? Take that money that you're saving and put it towards something for the coming year. Put it in your piggy bank or buy more expensive alcohol with it. If that's your proclivity. If it's not, then buy more expensive. Well, the, 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 what? If you're not drinking alcohol. Weed? Yes, buy more expensive weed. Thank you, Max. Gosh, I'm guessing the younger generation celebrates New Year's with a hit as opposed to a sip. Am I right? One big fucking Cheech and Chong movie. Smoke billowing out of car doors and rooms. And Anyway, uh, listen to what the lineup is. We're going to make a puff pastry thing reminiscent of French onion soup. We're going to make what arguably could be the number one preferred, favorite, loved appetizer at any event, deviled eggs. But very simply, only a few ingredients. There'll be ranch deviled eggs with crispy panko on the top because if a deviled egg is missing anything and it hardly is it's a little texture we're gonna bring it with some crispy panko we're gonna make mashed potato egg rolls so simple so quick you won't if you blink you won't even see it happening so don't blink i guess we're gonna marinate some olives because everybody loves an olive the oily the delicious garlic all oh, that's great we'll do that and then there's one more thing. Stand by, let me look at my stuff. Oh, meatballs. Yes, slowly cooked. I'm using frozen ones. I can cheat. It's New Year's Eve. You can do these things. I tell you, it's okay to cheat all the time. Just not on your, your other half. That's bad. Right, boys? Right. Very bad. Don't cheat on any one in your life. Only cheat with food ingredients. We begin by starting to caramelize some onions for our puff pastry dealio, and then we'll move right into the olives. We begin with a pan on the heat, just a little glug of olive oil, and a couple large yellow onions that I've sliced. And in we go. You know what I could have used here, Max? What? A bigger pan. But this is gonna be fine. Just give everybody just a gentle toss so it gets some of the oil on them. These are gonna shrink way down. We're gonna be fine. Now, I'm not trying to burn them. I'm not trying to blacken them. I want them caramelizing slowly to bring out the natural sweetness of them. And while that happens, they're gonna get much darker. So we'll let that happen off to the side. In the meantime, we can make some marinated olives. And we begin. I have one jar of black and one jar of green pitted olives. If you didn't like one of those colors, just use the other one twice, but come on, it looks so much better. To this, we'll add two big cloves of garlic, some dried rosemary, could be fresh, some dried thyme, a little pinch of our BFF, some red pepper flakes, might be my favorite part. Next up, we need some lemon peel, and Maxi has given us one of his beautiful Meyer lemons that he handcrafts at his home. Is that going too far? Use as little as you like, I like that much. And I want a little juice, so we'll cut and go about a tablespoon or so without any seeds. The last ingredients, about a half a cup of nice olive oil. And we will mix. All right, this now you want to set aside, put it in the fridge, put it in a jar, give it at least a few hours overnight, two days, three days would be magnificent. We'll come back to this a little bit later. In the meantime, here's our onions coming along nicely. We add two things. One will be some butter. That will really help add some beautiful richness. And then a little thyme. Quarter of a teaspoon, maybe? All right, back on the heat. In the meantime, let's get some deviled eggs happening. Peeled hard boiled eggs. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our eggs, we're gonna cut them in half, and we're gonna take the yolk. This is deviled egg 101. Just knock it in there and continue till you're done. And the last one goes in. You know what's next? We give them a little mash. And I find it easier if there's a little bit of mayo already in when you're doing it. The goal is an even mashing. You don't want a big piece of yolk like this in the middle of somebody's deviled egg. That's disconcerting and lazy on your side. A couple things at this point. Little hit of our BFF, little onion powder. And did I say we were using ranch? Because we're using ranch and ranch powder. This is a 1.25 ounce pack. I'm probably going half of it. It smells so good. All right, let's add a little bit of green end to this. So we cut off the end, we clean it up, we pull off the part we don't want, and then a fine chop before we put it in. Another mix and a quick taste. Wow, the ranch, a single ingredient has transformed this inside. 
One of the things I want for these eggs is a little bit of a crispy top. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a, about a tablespoon of butter, let it start to melt. Start to melt, start to melt, start to melt. And to this, we will add some panko breadcrumbs. And what's gonna happen is pretty obvious. The breadcrumbs are gonna get crispy and buttery, slightly more golden, and they will make a fine, crisp little topping for these guys. Look, you can see they're starting to get color. That's what you want, but you don't want them to burn, so you gotta be careful. Not too much heat. And when they get that color, that goldeny, like that all over, you're there. I mean, they've been in the pan about 30 seconds. And yes, my pan is fairly hot, but and once they're done, I'm gonna take them out, put them in another little pan and spread them out. That will A, let them cool and B, stop them from cooking. I don't want them any browner than this. But while we wait for these to cool, let's fill the eggs. I'm gonna take the filling, put it in a Ziploc bag, squoosh it down to the corner, cut the tip off and use it like a piping bag. In we go, in we go, in we go, and so on and so on until you're done. Great, when you're done, you can put them on a serving platter, or in my case, an antique baguette pan, just waiting to be used. So just line your kids up. I bought this wooden baguette pan in Napa years ago at an antique store, never knowing what I was gonna use it for, but I've since used it many times for appetizers. And I love it. It's like a ski. It's like a ski. And last, ready for the finishing touch? And we're off. I'm telling you, that is gonna make all the difference in the world. Don't be cheap. You'll be glad the crunch is there. So that's beautiful, but now I've got these guys. And now I might as well make these for the boys. Well, for Max, Chance doesn't like deviled eggs. We learned something about him today. Oh, it was the best part of today for me, is that kid. And you know, they're one biters. I don't have to explain that. You wouldn't take one bite and chew, eat, swallow, go back. You would do this. Mm. The ranch, holy shit. Well, they're two biters because you get a second half. Back to the onions though. Oh my God, they're so good. So you remember these guys coming along swimmingly, I might add. Now I wanna add a little beef broth. I don't wanna soak them and I don't want it to be soupy, but a few tablespoons of beef broth will just enhance the flavor. But over the next few minutes, we'll soak in and just make them even more luscious. Like you can see, most of that already got soaked up. So we'll give it a little more. That's great. I say it's time to move on to some mashed potato egg rolls. And wait till you see the cheat for this. That's two cups of boiling water. And before anybody freaks out, this is a pack of 100% real potatoes that happen to be in powdered form. It's fine. And I got the smoky cheese and bacon one. So you add it to the boiling water, you kill the heat, and then you mix until it's combined. I'll be honest, they smell really good. I'm gonna add a little garlic powder, a little onion powder, and a little of our BFF and continue to mix. All right, done. That just needs to sit now until it's cool. Look, here's the thing. If I just roasted a chicken, I would have made my own mashed potatoes. If this was Thanksgiving, I'm making my own mashed potatoes. But because these are going inside of a wonton wrapper and getting rolled and getting oiled a bit and then in the oven until crispy, I'm okay using the package cheap. You should be too, because they're pretty damn good. Look at these beauties. That's some amazing caramelization there. And only two things, thyme and a little butter. Well, thyme as in T-I-M-E. Also T-H-Y-M-E and a little butter, B-U-T-T-E-R. At this point, let's add a little vermouth or white wine, like a third of a cup, and this will bubble away. The liquid will leave, but the flavor will stay. And when almost all of the liquid has evaporated, I'm gonna add one fat tablespoon of flour to the top of this and mix it in. Because this is going in puff pastry, I don't want this to be too loose or wet, and the flour is gonna help with that. So we give it a second for the flour taste to burn off. I'll take this off the heat to cool. And while it does, we can begin the meatballs. This little pot, we'll turn the heat onto, and we'll add about a half a cup of soy. If I turn it, it helps me gauge the amount better. And about the same of sweet chili sauce. It's gonna come out as, oh, there we go, sweet. This is gonna need about a tablespoon or so of sriracha. I reserve the right to add more, a little brown sugar, and a little mix. And to this, I will add what were previously frozen meatballs. It's still a little hard. Dump them in, give them some of this. Make sure everybody's coated nicely. And when they are, just let the kid simmer away until the meatballs are soft inside and have the benefit of that little sauce we made for them. Low simmer, 10, 15 minutes. I'll put these guys off to the side. I think it's mashed potato egg roll time. 
And look at what's happened. Look at what's happened. What's happened? All the liquid has evaporated. You know where it's gone? Into these little guys. Look at their plump, they're sticky, they're sensational looking. Let's get this little bean that Max likes and we'll just bust out a bunch of them right here. Remember, we started with them frozen. You keep a bag of these in your freezer and you're minutes away from something this beautiful and sticky. And I have a little minced granulated onion for the top. Oh, come on now. Come on now, son. Well, I don't know what's not to like here. And if you wanted, you could put uh, skewers in them to make it easier for your guests or give them these forks, a fork, yes. Oh, do you see that? It's just that, that is hot and burning my fingers. But I wanted to show you how tender, plump, and beautiful they are. Oh boy. Mm. Sticky, glossy, spicy from that sriracha. I did not put that much in. And I know sweet chili sauce is not spicy. It's got a little bit. Oh boy, those good. Oh boy, I could eat too many of those. Ah, time for the um, the, the, the onions, the, the, the puff pastry. We gotta get that happening. This is a little flour and this is puff pastry. And this will come out of its packaging. Remember this guy? This is our onion, our gorgeous onions. Just spread them out. We're going lengthwise when we roll this guy up. So spread out as much as you can for a nice even onion spreading. That doesn't make sense. Spread them out as evenly as you can. And when you've got it nice, come by with your cheese and any kind of Swiss will do well. This is Gruyere, Emmentaler you could use, regular Swiss. If you had slices of Swiss, that would be okay too. Want good coverage here. Now we roll. So what you want to do is have this come over the top. So use the paper as your helper to try and roll up. I'm gonna come back in with a little flour to get them off, so I don't want them sticking. I wanna seal this edge as best I can. It's really lovely, boys, isn't it? It's really lovely. I get my baking sheet, parchment lined. We're gonna take a knife, trim the ends because the ends have really no filling in them. We'll pick it up, we'll gently put it on top of our parchment paper and then we take our scissors and we cut. And that's the fun part. Got this beautiful long log and just push one side one way and the other side the other way. This is just gonna make it prettier when the guy bakes. We take a little brush and an egg yolk that we have beaten with a tablespoon of water and we brush the whole kid. When you get down to the end, just make sure you've got a nice little bit of egg on pretty much everybody. My oven is on to 425 degrees and this will go in for 25-ish minutes until golden, brown, and beautiful. These are egg roll wrappers. This is our mashed potato mix. And those are pieces of cheese to go inside the egg rolls with the mashed potatoes. Here's how we do it. We take one of the wrappers, separate it from the rest of the pack, put it on the counter in front of you with a point facing you. Then take a lightly moistened towel and cover up the rest of them so they don't dry out. We want a couple tablespoons of filling. That would be mashed potato like this. So put that just below the equator line. And then we'll grab one of our pieces of cheese, push it down a bit, put a little bit of the mashed potato on top to help cover, and you're good. Before you roll, dip your fingers in a little bit of water and just wet the outer edge all the way around. Just gonna help this kid stick. And then we do this. We take the point closest and we come over the top and then we snug back. Nice and neat, nice and neat, nice and neat. Push down by the end of the filling, bring those corner points in, and then nice and easily just roll away from you until your kid's all snugged up beautiful. Put it on a baking sheet, do the rest. There you go, sweet. We're ready to bake. Out comes our baking sheet from the air fryer. We give it a quick spray. On go our mashed potato egg rolls. We get another spray and in they go. The air fryer's at 390. I've set it for eight minutes. At the halfway mark, I'll flip the kids over, give them a spray, let them finish. We're there. Oh, a couple leaks, but that's okay. Oh, they're pretty, pretty. Oh yeah. It's funny, they only leaked when they turned over on their backs, but who cares? Let's have one. Are you gonna cut it or yeah. just bite it? I think I, oh, I think I got to. It's gonna be fucking 200 degrees. Well, let's do this, shall we? 
Oh, that's, this is, this is some pretty shit right there, man. Look, we could have let it cool a little bit, but now look what you've got. You've got this ooey gooey cheese on the inside. Lovely mashed potatoes, smoked cheesy bacon for, ow, it's, da. Ah. Okay, bite time, let's do this. I can do this, I think. I think the obvious place to bite would be this corner, and that's not why I'm going there, I'm going here. You see this crispy, crunchy, all this melty, gooey. Ah. Son of a bitch. Please let them cool. They'll also firm up a little bit, but damn, are these good. Wow. Okay, we got one thing left. Remember what it is? It's the puff pastry business with the onions and the cheese. Let me go get it, because I cannot wait. And after about 25 minutes, success. Gorgeous golden success. And let's just get the guy off without busting him. Ow, oh, ow. Oh. There we go. Swing. And we cut right there. Oh, glorious. It's freaking glorious. 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 I want to have a bite now. Get it in my belly. This is the shit, ladies and gentlemen. Look here, then look at this gorgeousness. But wait, you know what we say? It's not about looks. It's about this. Mm. Buttery. French onion soup forward. Oh, and the cheese. I could stand here and eat this for a month. But I'll just have one more bite while I grab our olives. Remember those? That's the landing spot. And here they are. You want to take them out of the fridge a few minutes before you go to serve them. They'll be better closer to room temp than ice cold. But for now, that's a pretty bowl of olives. That's a pretty bowl of marinated olives with garlic and rosemary and thyme and lemon peel and red pepper flakes. And damn, come to me, little one, come to me. And this is when you want to use good olive oil, not the junky stuff, the good stuff. Mm. They're not too spicy. It's a beautiful richness from the oil. That rosemary and thyme are just fantastic in here. Look it, everybody loves olives and make these a couple days before. They're only gonna get better. Then remember, just take them out of the fridge. Let them warm up a bit. All right, well, that's our Happy New Year appetizer video for you. Everything under 10 prunes, as my brother-in-law Brian would say. That's uh, $10 for people that don't know Brian. Everything fantastic, everything easy to make. Do this kind of stuff. Have people over, have them bring stuff. You make these things, and everybody's good. I got nothing else. Happy New Year, everyone. Boys? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. See you guys. Oh, subscribe. That'd be a good thing to do right at the end of the year. Hit the subscribe button. Give us a little love and a like, and then tell us what you want to see us make in 2024. 2024. Oh, it's coming. Nothing's going to stop it.